whenever you see me put these gloves on, you know there must be a very special guitar here. Yeah, man. It's a uh, Dakisto. Not only is this a Dakisto guitar, it's a guitar that hasn't even been played since it's left Jimmy Dakisto's workbench more than 30 years ago. Uh, and today, we'll put it on this workbench, and we'll get to see how Jimmy put the strings on. And we'll make sure that we do whatever needs to be done so that the guitar plays at its best potential. For the first time in history, you will get an intimate close-up view of Jimmy D'Aquisto's own handwork through the optical system of a high-powered scientific microscope. And when it comes to scientific equipment, I only use the best brands. Hence, the old Chinese proverb that says, for the latest developments in guitar microscopy, make sure you subscribe to the Guitar Quackery YouTube channel. And here you are. So, we'll get to see uh, actual tool marks on the frets left by Jimmy D'Aquisto's own hands. And uh, we'll also see his actual work on the nut of the guitar. And we'll also see how Jimmy used to wind the strings on the tuning post. Now, the only reason why we can see any of this today is because the guitar we're about to examine is the last remaining guitar that Jimmy D'Aquisto made and that has never been played. The owner told me that he only played it for about three hours after he bought it from Jimmy D'Aquisto. Uh, so uh, I examined the frets through the microscope and I can confirm that because there's absolutely no fret wear. Um, I will also show you the inside of the guitar using an endoscope. So we'll see all of the internal glue joints inside of the body of the guitar. And I am just telling you, this is really a unique episode of Guitar Quackery because um, I don't think anything like this has ever been done before. Uh, there's some confusion about how to pronounce the name Daquisto, because uh, I used to pronounce it Daquisto, but I looked it up. So the proper way to say it in Italian is Daquisto. Right. So that's what I'll keep using from now on. So welcome back to Guitar Quackery. And now let me take you over to the shop and let's get busy. Before I forget, special thanks to James Chirillo, who answered an email that I sent asking for a string recommendation for this guitar to be played in the style of Freddie Green. So not specifically a string recommendation for a uh, Dakista guitar, <clears throat> but for a musical style. Now, it's a beautiful guitar. Um, I want to go over the guitar with a fine tooth comb and show you everything. But before I do, I'm going to take my gloves off because we are going to stop treating this as a museum piece and we are going to start treating it as a musical instrument. So we are going to service it and this guitar will finally be played. Um, five of the six strings on this guitar are actually strings that Jimmy D'Aquisto put on this guitar. Um, the guitar had maybe three hours of play and um, one string broke. It broke, uh, it is my understanding, when the owner was tuning it. So he put a new string on. We know this is not Jimmy's work because, well, it doesn't look like the other uh, strings. So this is how Jimmy wrapped the strings when he installed them. Okay, a little lock this way. And then he cut the string. You can see that it's pointing upwards. So it's not quite the way they do it at the Martin factory. 
Uh, let's look at all of them. Okay. I'm going to carefully remove these strings and I'm going to try to preserve these nuts uh, for uh, future analysis or research. But we do need to remove these strings. Strings are not supposed to be left on the guitar forever. Uh, but this might be the last remaining guitar in the world with the strings on the guitar that were actually installed by Jimmy Dacisto himself. There will be a live streaming video of me removing the strings and doing a full service on the guitar. And I think I might use some highlights from the live streams in the second part of this video that you are watching now. Okay. Um, the fretboard is ebony, and um, I measure a 17 inch radius on these frets uh, with the 17 inch radius gauge. I will show you this in a moment. The frets do need some work. Uh, this is an ebony pickguard. Um, yeah, it is held by two brass screws. We might need to remove it to do some fret work so we don't damage it. Uh, it is a floating arched up bridge. I did find a tiny little gap here and here, but the rest of it is perfectly matched to the soundboard. So I'm not going to be doing anything to, to the bridge. Um, I did find a little blemish here, and I asked the owner if he ever used a humidifier that goes inside, and he did, and this might be from the humidifier. And if I can buff it out, we'll buff that out. Um, I will need to cut the string slots on the saddle a little bit deeper, and I'll show you why. Um, we're going to examine the guitar on the inside, but I'll give you a very quick uh, peek. Uh, so uh, we don't really call this sloppy work. I don't see any glue squeeze out anywhere. And so yeah, it really looks beautiful on, on the inside. Now this is the tailpiece, which is uh, hand carved and there are brass screws here holding it there, there's a hinge yeah and let's have a look at the binding that's the binding that surrounds the guitar body okay um we'll have a look at the nut through the microscope so let's not talk too much about that now um except you know I do want to say that it's ivory, and that's something that was legal back in the day. Um, and it was a material that was used on uh, higher valued instruments. Now I want to have a look at the back. The top and the back uh, were cut for a cello initially so this is where he would have bought his supplies you know from a luthier supply place that would supply um, instrument makers that were building violins and cellos and upright basses or better say double basses for classical music uh, it's book matched all right so this is alpine maple, and this is American maple. Um, the tuners are shallers, and he painted the back of the headstock with a little stinger. You can see this pattern here, which tells us that it's quarter sawn. It does, um, the wood grain does go in this direction a little bit, and you can see this here as well, going off to the side. 
Uh, I guess when he was carving the neck, you can't feel this, but um, there is this, uh, you know, imperfection in the wood grain. So this makes this guitar unique in, in a way, right? I, I did not see any uh, actual twist in the neck, but um, I cannot get any relief when I, uh, so right now the truss rod is completely loose. It was a little bit tight initially, and there was a little bit of a, a back bow. Um, I loosened the truss rod. I actually had to um, modify the socket wrench uh, to do that. Um, so here, I'll quickly show you. Uh, it simply didn't fit. Uh, so I had to, to grind it so that it would fit because there was very little space. Now let's remove the truss rod cover. Um, those are brass screws. You need to use a flathead screwdriver. You need to be very careful, uh, especially with brass screws. And if they're too tight, you got to think before you turn. Uh, so these were not uh, tight. I think maybe he used paraffin wax. Uh, to lubricate them when he installed them. Uh, but I did remove the truss rod cover um, just moments ago, so this is really um, the first time, or technically the second time it's been removed. We need to loosen this string because it's pinching the truss rod cover here, so we can go down, we can pull it down this way. All right, and here we have a Gibson style uh, truss rod nut. So why don't we look at it through the microscope? We can see it better. Uh, here, this is it. Right. And now, because I did grind down the surface now, the truss rod wrench fits in that tight space between 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 the acorn nut and the bottom here of the truss rod uh, cavity. So right now it's completely loose and I'm just catching a little bit. All right, let's have a look at the nut. Um, we are going to find some imperfections. Um, so, okay, so this is not the original string, so I will loosen the string just to show you. So this string slot is, is uh, okay. Um, there you go. This is how Jimmy cut it. Let's put the string back. I will not be removing the other strings just now. But you can see that here, this string slot uh, was in fact cut too wide. But because uh, the string is going off to the side, it is not wobbling inside the nut when you play it. And here you have the G string. And the rest of the strings are in fact tighter, like that. Okay. Um, I also want to show you, you know, some of the frets. Uh, this is all his original work. Um, here, let's focus on, on this fret here. This is the second fret right here. Um, as you can see, maybe the, now I'm seeing this, I didn't even notice this when I was initially looking at the guitar, I wasn't looking at every single fret. But now I'm seeing this little gap. Um, so this also happens on Gibson guitars uh, when the wood uh, dries up a little bit and it pushes the binding, the fret pushes the binding. Um, but um, yeah, he used a three corner file to crown these frets. Um, 
Again, there's no fretware because the guitar hasn't been played. This is, uh, once again, the second fret. I'm moving the strings to the side so you can see. Uh, yeah, the string is loose because I had to loosen it for the truss fret cover. But as you can see, there's absolutely no fret wear. Um, I mean, barely any little scratches there. So, uh, yeah, this guitar has not been played really. Let's look at one more fret. Again, we see a little bit of a separation here because the fret tang is pushing the side of the binding. You can even see a little bump here. Let's zoom in a little bit. You can see a little bit of flatness on top of the fret. Uh, let's reduce the light. Not sure what he used to uh, polish the frets. I didn't find any steel wool particles. I, I did find particles that looked like they could have been steel wool, but uh, I couldn't pick them up with a magnet, so uh, that's not what they are. Uh, but once again, we see a little bit of a separation here and uh, a bump, okay? So, so the wood did shrink a little bit. Uh, yeah, we want to go over all the frets with a fret rocker. Uh, for most part, the frets are even, but I did find a few uneven frets. So I take that with a fret rocker. Rocker. Uh, here it is. So just going over the frets. No rocking here, no rocking here, but on this side, the third fret is a little bit high. So we'll have to take that down. Uh, here there's a, a little bit of a high spot. As you can see, it's pretty okay here just a little bit high okay this could have moved over time the guitar is over 30 years old okay let's continue here and I as I recall that 13th fret has a high spot so nothing here but here it's going to rock okay uh, so there's a high spot on the 13th fret, only on the treble side. And then the rest of the fretboard is just fine. I want to show you uh, the nut through the other microscope, because I do want to show you um, that it is ivory. So let's, I am maneuvering this guitar slower than I would be maneuvering, uh, I don't know, a Yamaha 335. Yeah. So with this microscope, we can see the side of the nut, okay? And we're going to stop it right here. And if you see that there, we can see very faint lines going down um, on the side, okay? Almost looks like wood, okay? And that's, that's what tells me that this is ivory. Uh, now, uh, let's continue with the inspection of the knot. This is the B string, and admittedly, um, this is not, um, well, it, it's too wide. And it's, it's also cut a little rough. But we're not going to fix it unless there's a playability issue. 
okay? Um, this is a G string. Okay, move over to the D string. And then the A. And the E string is loose, so why don't I remove it? And we can look at the inside of the string slot, just like that. All right. I do uh, want to look at the, at the bridge. In fact, uh, I want to look at the, the saddle, all right? So uh, we'll turn the guitar around. And we'll look at the saddle through the microscope. Okay. Um, so I will be cutting the saddle slots a little deeper. Uh, it just needs to be done. As you can see, there's a little damage on the side here because Jimmy cut the uh, saddle slots very uh, shallow. So when you, when you play, the downstrokes will push the string down like this at full tension and then it will damage the top of the uh, saddle. Uh, so to avoid that, we really need to uh, cut it deeper. Uh, here, if I lift it, this is at full tension, but I'm lifting it. We see that it's also not very deep and neither are the other string slots. I'm being very careful here because this, I am doing at full tension, but I'm lifting the strings up, right? As I show you the saddle slots. Here, if I zoom in, you can see that, uh, well, what I think happened here is I, I think that his file slipped. Okay, so that's a double cut. I don't think this is an impression from the string itself. And then we have this string. Um, so this string is is loose. You know, I can just show you like that. All right. Um, now, I almost forgot to show you another spec, which is the scale length of this guitar. Okay, so it's a little bit um, not standard. We'll have a look at that. Um, what I have here is um, this um, this is a, a music nomad tool, and, and this section here is used to measure the scale length at the 12th fret. Um, so this part should be pushed against the nut, and then we should take a reading from here. So now um, I am going to simply reposition the camera and zoom in so we can see what it is. Okay. Um, so if, if I push it against the nut, uh, we can see that it's not quite 25 and three quarters. Well, this says 20, 5.34, right? I'm sorry, not 25 and three quarters, uh, 25.34, what am I talking about? Um, so this is not three quarters, that's 25.34. 
so it's it's short of that all right uh, so uh, the exact measurement isn't even important but it's not um, it, it doesn't fall on, on this standard uh, scale length uh, any of the uh, scale lengths that are included here there is just a little bit of a gap between um, the bridge and the soundboard but I'm not going to fix it because it's really not affecting the playability of the guitar and we don't really want to alter any of the work that uh, was done by Jimmy the Kisto. This guitar is hand built and honestly if we look closely we are going to find imperfections. But here we're looking at the bridge and with the feeler gauge I find a little gap here a very tiny little gap here and on this corner but the rest of the bridge oh here there's also a gap look at that I didn't even see that before so there's a, a gap here and then there's a little gap here I didn't find any other gaps uh, yeah so interesting there's that little pocket that I, I didn't even uh, detect the first time around when I was looking at it and now we are going to look at the inside of the guitar um, so I have a light I'm going to put the light inside of the uh, F hole and light up the inside of the guitar like this let me show you here's the light okay so this is lighting up the inside it's not damaging the guitar in any way and here is the endoscope I will hook it up to my uh, phone and then we can take uh, pictures and I can record a video even. So this will take me a minute to set up. I'll show you um, like this and I can even record a video and then edit together a composite yeah. okay so this is what we see and here's the endoscope and now I can uh, place it inside and here you can see um, on this camera what I see and now I can record the video um, so here we see Jimmy's signature we'll have a look at that uh, but we want to look at all the glue joints uh, that's the uh, end block that's where the tailpiece is the light is over there and we can look at his work on the inside okay this is the neck uh, block so there was a little bit of squeeze out here 
which is actually good uh, because there are no gaps. This is the uh, most important glue joint, I think, on the entire guitar. Uh, because if this is no good, the neck w will wiggle, all right? So this is Jimmy's work on the inside. All right, and now I can push this button to switch cameras. That's it, so now we are looking at the soundboard. And here we see a signature, it says to Phyllis, uh, his signature. Jimmy D'Aquisto. This is the serial number of the guitar. The one could stand for 1991 because it says here that it's 62691 and then 230. Okay? So I'm not sure if he wanted anyone to see this, but there it is. He did sign it. Okay. Now, uh, we can also look at uh, his signature also appears uh, here, if we look straight. So if I point the camera like this, and again, I, I need to switch the camera. So this you will see from the uh, outside first, just like that. Uh, you see the serial number, same serial number, and his signature with a different date. Okay, 6991. Okay, and once again, this is visible through the F hole. All right. Now, I'm going to put this away and remove this light. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Uh, there will be a live stream of the full service on this guitar, uh, which will also be recorded, obviously, and archived. And I will take some highlights from it and include those highlights in the second part of this video. Now, we're not going to do this now. Uh, I changed my mind and I have a better idea. I will simply make a separate video uh, showing all the highlights uh, from the first service that was ever done on this guitar. That's going to be better for you and for everybody. Um, I already spent a few hours on the guitar and you can watch all of it on the other channel called Guitar Quackery Live. There's a link below, right? Um, and I will continue to post on that playlist so everything will be archived. Um, now, oh, see, I'm drinking tea. That's tea. And the only reason I'm drinking tea is because I ran out of coffee. So if you want to buy me a coffee, you can click the link below that says buy me a coffee. Well, thank you very much. Um, what else? Um, uh, I spoke with the owner. So the owner, the reason why he didn't play the guitar is because he's really a clarinet player. Um, he ordered the guitar from Jimmy and he visited Jimmy a couple of times. And one day he received a call and said, eh, come pick up your guitar. Uh, there was also uh, some case candy left in the guitar from Jimmy. So I will put that in a separate video because that's also interesting. And um, I will keep servicing this guitar from now on. I haven't finished the first part of the service and I'm not even keeping it at the shop. So the owner picked it up and he will drop it off again for me to continue doing this first service on the guitar. We'll need to do some more fret work because the guitar developed a little bit of a back bow. I believe it's because uh, Jimmy used flame 
maple to make the neck and flame maple is not the most stable so potentially it can bend over time right? no problem we'll do a little bit of a level crown and polish and the guitar will be good to go without any fret pops i'm really impressed with the guitar uh with the sound and and i assure you this guitar has a superior high volume sound and we'll talk about all that uh once i finish the work so for now thank you very much if you want to support this channel there are some links below make sure you subscribe to the other channel guitar quackery live because that's how you will get notified when i actually work on this guitar and on other guitars and you'll get to watch me in real time thank you and i'll see you soon